All right, welcome back to WMAC Now with your host, Chuck Stevenson. Coming at you tonight with a very special fight review. This time we're going to Tokyo, Japan for the Deep Jewels Grand Prix Finals in the Atomweight Division, part of Deep Jewels 33, back on Saturday, Sunday, uh, June 19th and 20th. Uh, they had the semifinals and the finals on the same night. Um, all bouts were two rounds of five minutes apiece with the final, or the winner of the finals rather, being crowned the new Deep Jewels Atomweight champ. So basically we're doing three fights in one review because they're all interconnected. So let's get down into it. The first semifinal bout was between Shiyu Park coming in at five and two and Saori Oshima coming in at four and two. Now this was actually a rematch when they fought each other before the Grand Prix back at Deep Jewels 31 back in December of last year. And Park came out ahead via decision in that one. So Saori Oshima came in looking for revenge and Park came in looking to looking for the repeat. So let's get down into it. So the first round, um, honestly, this is a bit surprisingly, Oshima was a little bit more aggressive with her strikes at first. Um, while Park, on the other hand, you know, she utilized her footwork and, and low kicks to counter Oshima. Um, after stuffing the first takedown offense by Oshima, you know, Park started to get a little more aggressive. Um, she seemed to knock down Oshima with a left hand, and then she decided to follow her down into Oshima's guard and started working some ground and pound. And then at that point, Oshima, she latched on an armbar, stretched out, went belly down, um, uh, forcing the tap from Shiyu Park at 2 minutes and 28 seconds of the first round. So your winner in the first semifinal was Saori Oshima via submission due to armbar. Bit of an upset here. A lot of people were expecting uh, Park to end up winning this Grand Prix, including myself. So bit of an upset here. Um, uh, I have in my notes here that, you know, Park should have kept it standing. She got too hungry for the finish. Um, also, Oshima later on that evening uh, claimed to have fallen on purpose. She said she didn't get knocked down. She, she went down hoping to lure Park to the mat. And it seemed, if, if true, it definitely worked. Um, interesting, weird fact regarding this fight. So, Oshima had Reina in her corner and Park had Miyu Yamamoto. And Miyu Yamamoto and Reina fought each other. And when they fought, Reina beat Miyu, submitting her via armbar. So the winner of this fight, you know, was cornered by the winner of a previous fight by armbar against the corner of the other fighter. Just a weird little JMMA factoid there for you. So moving along to the second semifinal bout, Yukaru Aono coming in 7-4, and four, taking on Nisei coming in at 2-3. and three. Now Nisei, or Mizuki Oshiro is a real name, was a replacement fighter. She had lost her quarterfinal bout and was set to be in the uh, reserve bout. However, um, Ayam Yurkami, who was set to base Karanu, came down with the illness that she still hasn't fully recovered from. I don't believe it was uh, listed to the current pandemic, but don't know for sure. Anyway, let's get into the first round here. Uh, so first round starts and no surprise, Carol Aono came out shooting for the takedown straight away. Now Nisei uh, stuffed the first couple before ducking under an Aono punch and getting a body lock on Aono. Then she went for a standing bag. They even got, you know, I, I know she got one hook in. I think she was like most of the way to the second hook. And, but she couldn't stay up. So came back down and Aono kind of like stepped to the side and kind of just pulled Nisei to the ground, uh, Aono getting to, into Nisei's half guard. From there, Aono passed very easily to mount. And as Nisei tried to roll Aono off, Aono latched on an arm bar, forcing the stoppage at a minute and 38 seconds. So here you have the second fight of the evening and the second first round arm bar. So both semifinal belts ended with first round arm bar. Um, I thought Nisei was doing okay before the failed back take, but this is another one of those cases where, you know, don't, don't change what's working. 
Um, Nisei was doing okay. Park was doing okay on the feet, and then they went to the ground, and it backfired on them. Uh, so then we moved on to the final uh, bout of the evening, the uh, Grand Prix final. Now they had a nice belt ceremony before the fight, and of course this is Saori Oshima coming in now at five and two, taking on Hikaru Ano now coming in at eight and four. So the first round, uh, Anu landed an overhand, uh, then a double leg takedown as Oshima came forward. From there, a fun scramble ensued with Aono ending up in Oshima's uh, scarf hold position. Um, from there, Aono escaped out of the back, ending up in Oshima's guard. Um, Aono then escaped a guillotine by Oshima, and Oshima rolled for a knee bar, but a scramble ended up with Oshima landing on top in side control. Um, from there, Oshima went for a double arm lock that she also used to maintain the position, and then a lengthy leg lock battle ensued to finish the round. So a very, very busy first round nonstop from the opening bell to the closing bell. Uh, second round, Oshima landed a left hand, uh, then Aono just straight up tackled her and immediately uh, started battling for leg locks. Both of them were rolling. And after an eventual scramble, Aono landed on top. Um, Oshima then latched on, you know, the, the double wrist lock, the Kimura, rolled them both over, and Oshima ended up landing in Aono's half guard. So very nice reversal of position there by Saori Oshima. Um, some short punches on top by Oshima, and Aono, she tried several escapes, but honestly, Oshima's top game is too solid for any attempt that Aono tried. Um, Oshima attempted a crucifix at one point, but it, she wasn't able to get it fully, and it, Aono, you know, sensing it, allowed it to, uh, used it to get back to half guard. Um, from there, Oshima eventually passed to side control again near the rounds, and and that was the end of the second and final round. So it went to the judges, and because this is a championship bout, they had five judges for this one. Four of the judges saw it 2018, one lone dissenting judge saw it 2017, all in favor of Saori Oshima, who became the Grand Prix winner and the new Deep Jewels Atomweight champion. Uh, my notes on this fight, I have, you know, that it's no surprise that it was a grapple-heavy fight. Came in expecting that from these two. Um, I, I thought Aono was competitive in the first, but in the second round, once she got onto her back, she just couldn't get off. Oshima's, you know, top control was her, her sense of balance, um, her weight distribution, everything. It was just too much for her care Aono to be able to get off of her back. So Oshima, like I said, she was declared the tournament champion and the Deep Jewels Atomweight champ. She is actually now a two-weight champion because she holds the Deep Microweight title as well. And they came in, they had a, a nice ceremony. Uh, they brought her, her husband and her kids in, the, the adorable little twins, um, presented her with the belt and all this, the sponsors' uh, prizes. Um, Saori Oshima got a, I believe, a 100,000 yen bonus, which ends up being like close to $10,000. And then um, Hikaru Aono, for getting second place, got like 50,000 yen, which comes out to around $5,000 uh, bonus. Uh, not huge money, but again, this is like, you know, J Japanese MMA, like small show Japanese MMA. So that's actually some nice money. Okay, so those are my thoughts on the three fights, the two semifinals and the final match. So... Let's talk about this Grand Prix overall. Um, I thought it was a good idea for Deep Jewels to do a Grand Prix, because let's be honest here, tournaments are fun. And, you know, they create a lot of interest. From the moment a promotion announces a tournament, people start talking about it. They start speculating on oh, who will be in it. Uh, how, how will it go down? Will it be one night? Will they have just a few fights in one night and then the rest is spread out? Will it be completely spread out? Uh, what will the rules be? Will there be special rules? Uh, who's gonna beat who? You know, that's even before, you know, the, the 
participants get announced. Then as soon as the participants get announced, then it's like even the speculation just doubles, maybe even triples. Because then you're like, well, who's going to face who? Uh, who's going to beat who? How are they going to beat them? Who's facing who in the finals? Who's, who's the favorite? Who's the dark horse? I mean, look, like I said, tournaments are just that much fun and they create just weeks, if not months, of absolute outright interest, speculation, and conversation. So they're a good idea for any promotion to do. And I think it was really wise for Deep Jewels to do this. Um, also, it, they're good for rankings. Tournaments are good for the rankings. If you have a lot of fighters up near the top that haven't faced each other, you hold a tournament and then boom, the results of the tournament are your new rankings, basically. So that's good for that. Um, outside of some hiccups, this was actually a good Grand Prix. You know, we had uh, Sakura missed weight, giving Ayumi Murakami a bye, and then Ayumi Murakami got sick, allowing Nisei to come back in. So really, like two hiccups. But other than that, it was a good tournament. Um, Oshima got two f finishes and three fights, which is really good. Um, tournament favorite, early tournament favorite Park made it to the semifinals and, and got out and performed well. Um, Kara Aono, long, a long stay of Deep Jewels, made it to the finals, so that's good for her as well. I mean, it was a good Grand Prix, and you know what? It crowned a new champion because the championship was vacant, and Oshima got a shiny new white and silver belt. The old belt, which they retired, was red and silver, and it was from Jewels before it was bought by Deep and became Deep Jewels. So now she has a new, uh, shiny new uh, Deep Jewels belt. Um, also, like I said earlier, you know, this tournament created a new hierarchy and it opened avenues for, you know, future fight pairings. So a lot of new matchups can be made from this tournament. Important thing to note, only one participant in this whole Grand Prix was over the age of 30. Um, Shiyu Park just turned 30 recently, but... Before that, the only fighter in this whole Grand Prix over the age of 30 was Emi Tomomatsu, who's like 38. So this shows that, you know, Deep Jewels is entering like a new era. Before they had these older fighters fight that had fought each other so many times, and then the older fighters were starting to fight these newer, younger fighters and just, you know, basically trouncing them and keeping their hold on the sport. But now we have all these new, younger fighters. So Deep Jewels is turning a page here and it's beginning a new era of younger fighters, which is, is great. You have to have new fighters coming in and taking over in order for the sport to evolve and keep moving along. Now, as a fan, I, I was gutted for Shiyu Park, you know. I'd follow, I've been following her story, you know, she, she came to Japan in December, uh, st stuck in a hotel room for like two weeks, could only focus on her weight cut, said, well, I'm gonna stay here for this Grand Prix. So she stayed and trained in Japan the whole time, you know, in a different country with a different language. And I thought, you know, she was, she'd do really well in this tournament and made it to the semifinals and then lost. I, as a fan for her, I was gutted because, you know, it would have made for a super great story for her to have won. However, I'm not disappointed that the woman that beat her, Saori Oshima, won the championship. You know, Oshima has a great story too. She's young, she's a mother to twins, she was a microweight champ, so she fought, she's a champion at a lower weight, now she's a champion at, at atom weight. She's got a lot of great uh, things going for her. She's a strong grappler, she's a finisher. Um, she, she'll be a great champion, and you know what, she'll be a great champion for the promotion as well. You know, make, helping to make um, Deep Jewels and Deep also, the parent company, look really good. Um, so those are my notes for the tournament as a whole. So let's get down into fights to make. Well, first up, out of the semifinals and the final results, I think they need to make Park versus Aono 2. So Shiyu Park versus Hikaru Aono number 2. Um, this is a fight I expected to be in the finals. Since it didn't get into the finals, let's make it anyway. You know, this, this can be like the first fight to start to decide who will be the number one contender. Because now you have to have like figure out who's going to face Saori Oshima next for this title. So you have to get fights started going and this fight could, you know, make for 
um, a good start for that. You know, this could even decide the next number one contender. Now, for Saori Oshima, she has multiple options. First off, she's already the deep microweight champion. So, she could go back and defend her microweight title against whoever they decide to put her in against. Second option, Ryzen needs new talent right now. And they need somebody for their champion, Ayaka Hamasaki, to beat. Or to face, rather. Now, do I think that Oshima necessarily stands a chance against Hayaka Hamasaki at this point in her career? No. Um, I just don't. But having, having just won the Grand Prix and everyone's, gonna be, everyone's eyes are going to be on her, it does make for at least an interesting matchup from that perspective. So they could do it. And both are very talented judoka. So it's judo versus judo. That makes for a great story as well. So Oshima could get the call up from Ryzen anyway and end up facing Ayaka Hamasaki sometime in the fall or even in, in December. Another option, if she's interested, and she might not be because she might not want to leave her kids behind, Saori Oshima could travel overseas. Invicta is an option. Uh, she could be the Deep Jewels champ versus the Invicta champ, and we haven't had that in quite a while. I'm not sure we've ever had a Deep Jewels champ versus Invicta champ. I'd have to do some more looking into it for that one. I mean, we've had fights, fighters from Jewels and Deep Jewels come over to Invicta before, but I don't think we've ever had a champ versus champ bout like that. And um, I did a poll in a community post, and surprise, and somewhat surprisingly, I think all but like one or two voters thought that Saori Oshima could beat Alicia Zapatella. So I think that would make for a very interesting matchup. Now Zapatella, of course, is trying to coax Ayaka Hamasaki to come in to fight her, but Ayaka has no reason to go over there and prove herself, whereas Oshima does. So we could very well see that matchup in the future. It's a possibility. It's it's not a big possibility, but it's definitely a possibility. All right, so those are my overall thoughts on the Deep Jewels Adam Waite Grand Prix semifinals and final bout. Congratulations to Saori Oshima. I think she'll make a great champion for Deep Jewels. Um, in the meantime, I will link the fights in the uh, description and a pinned comment. It took a while for me to get this review up, but finally the fights got released on YouTube as well, so I will link them below. Uh, down below it. Uh, if you haven't watched them yet, please go do and then come back and let me know your thoughts on them in the comments down below. Now, if you like the video, please give it a like and while you're at it, go ahead and subscribe to WMMA Scene Now, the most complete women's mixed martial arts dedicated platform on YouTube. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.